Hey guys, Bungie introduced three new exotic chest armors for Season 13, otherwise known as Season of the Chosen. There is one for each class, I've tried all of them and each of them brings something special to the table. I have done a video on both the Titan Cuirass of the Fallen and the Hunter's Omni Oculus. Today is the Warlike's turn for the Mental of Battle Harmony. My name is Words and thanks for tuning in to the channel, I really appreciate your being here. Out of all the three exotic chess armors introduced by Bungie this season, I believe Mental of Battle Harmony is the biggest game changer. I say this because these exotics can be useful for any of the warlike subclass. I also think that it's just combining the Nazarek Sins helmet and the Phoenix Protocol chess piece together, then add some extra benefits. This is just brilliant in Bungie's part, in my opinion. The armor perks is called Absorption Cells, takedowns with weapons that have a damage type matching your subclass element, grant you super energy. While your super energy is full, you instead gain a temporary bonus to weapon damage of the type matching your subclass element. In layman translation, if you're going to use a solar subclass, you need to use solar weapons. Void weapons for the Void Walker subclass and Arc weapons Storm Color subclass. I didn't mention stasis because right now there is only one weapon in the game that is stasis and that is the salvation's grip. It's a grenade launcher in the heavy weapon slot. Unfortunately, you would handicap yourself using the stasis subclass with the mental of battle harmony, in my opinion. So stick to light subclass with this exotic. That said, this presents you with so many options and gives you a reason to play your light subclass again. Stasis is fun and amazing. but. With this warlike chess piece, light subclass can see some game time again. I was using Dawnblade in the Ordeal Nightfall, Devil's Lair, and I was getting my super very very fast using the TQ's Divination. By the way, TQ's Divination is a great exotic bow to pair with this Dawnblade subclass using this exotic. And for the Stormcaller, the Trinity Gold is another great choice to use with this exotic. By the way, Xur is selling Trinity Gold this weekend, so go for it. When it comes to the Void Walker subclass, Telesto is the best though. Now, this is just to name a few weapons choice to think about when using this exotic, but the possibility is almost endless with this exotics. Again, this is just my opinion. Now, whether you are convinced or not, if you want to try this exotic for yourself, you can get it through doing Legend or Master Difficulty Lost Sectors solo. When Chest Armor is the featured drop. In my experience with this system, once you get it once from a Lost Sector, you get the chance for it to drop anywhere else in the game, but Lost Sector is the most guaranteed way. Also remember, Lost Sectors rotate every day, but just like the other two chess armors video that I made, the best Lost Sector to do this, in my opinion, is the Perdition Lost Sector on Europa. I already made a video load as for the Perdition Lost Sector that works on all three characters, so today I'm going to show a loadout for the Exodus Garden 2 Alpha Lost Sector. This is on the Cosmodrome. That way you have two Lost Sectors to keep an eye on. Now, this is just my suggestion. You can also do other Lost Sectors like the ones on the Moon if you don't want to wait for the rotation of Perdition on Europa and Exodus Garden 2 Alpha on the Cosmodrome. Here is the setup that I use that work for Exodus Garden 2 Alpha. By the way, the gameplay you're watching is on Master Difficulty, however, I highly suggest you do this on Legend Difficulty because Legend is obviously a lot faster to get the exotics, but if you want to challenge yourself, go for the Master Difficulty. For subclass, I like to use Stasis inside Lost Sectors to freeze enemies. I will show you which aspects and fragments I use after I go over the weapons and armor setup. But I will not go into details with the aspects and fragment because they are subject to your playstyle. For weapons, I am using a sniper rifle in the kinetic slot for barrier champions because of the seasonal artifact mod, anti-barrier sniper rifle. It costs 6 energy but it's more powerful than using a scout rifle anti-barrier mod. So you have options to use either or. In the energy slot, I am using TQ's Divination for Overload Champions and to clear ads. You have a lot of other bow options like Limonac, which is void and can spread poison, but TQ's Divination did a lot better job during my runs. I'm telling you this because I cleared this low sector on Master Difficulty with both TQ's and Limonac, but TQ's did a better job. For the power weapon, I use a void rocket launcher, 
It works out very well because there's a few void servitors and the boss is a void servitor as well. You can use other void power weapons like machine guns etc etc but a void rocket launcher makes sense. Any void rocket launcher with tracking will do fine but the roll entry that I'm using here is very good because it's got tracking built into it. You can get one from strikes and nightfalls. Now for armors, the Mars are the most important when it comes to end game activities with champions. In my helmet, I'm using Sniper Rifle Ammo Finder and Rocket Launcher Ammo Finder, then a Global Reach mod in case I made some Warmind cells. This is not a Warmind cell build, but the option is there. Since I'm using TQ's Divination, which makes Solar Splash damage, combine this with the Wrath of Rasputin mod, then we're in business. So take what you can, but that's not the focus. For the gauntlets, I'm using the Overload Bow mod as well as the Anti-Barrier Sniper Rifle mod that I previously mentioned. Also, I'm using Charged Up for some extra stacks of charge with light. Now, it doesn't matter what type of gauntlets you use, the mods are what's important. For the chest armor, I prioritize the Taking Charge mod and Rocket Launcher reserves so I can carry more rockets. On to the leg armor. I'm using the Rocket Launcher Scavenger mod so I can get more rockets whenever I pick up heavy ammo. I'm also using Sniper Rifle Scavenger mod from the Seasonal Artifact which gives me more reserve ammo whenever I pick up special ammo from the ground. The third mod I'm using for the leg armor is Protective Light for some extra protection. Those are really really good. For the class item, I prioritize the Resonance Siphon mod from the Seasonal Artifact because Whenever I stun a champion, I get energy for my grenade, super, and rift abilities. It's a great mod. I also use the Glacial Inheritance mod because I get super energy back whenever I kill enemies with my stasis super. This one is not necessary, but use whatever you like here. Also, I'm using the Wrath of Rasputin mod because I have a chance to create war mine cells with the TQ's Divination splash damage. Not necessary, but it's whatever you can slot that might benefit your build. As promised, the aspects and fragments I'm using are the following. Force Pulse, Ice Flare Bolts, Whisper of Hadrians, Whisper of Torment, Whisper of Durance, and Whisper of Impetus. Whisper of Impetus is great to auto-reload your weapons, especially when you use rocket launchers. It's like having quick draw and auto-loading holster all in one. All you have to do to auto reload your stored weapon is use your melee and make sure your melee hits the enemy. It's almost like having auto reload on demand like the hunter dodge except this is a warlike melee. Now you can see in the beginning of the video I got the exotic to drop and I didn't have to kill all the enemies at the end. This means as long as you can kill the boss and open the chest you can get the exotic to drop. The barrier champions at the end of this lost sector are a pain in the butt, especially in master difficulty. So once you kill the boss, just go for the chest. You don't need platinum to get the exotic to drop, but on legend difficulty, it's easy to kill the barrier servitors at the end to get platinum, which might increase your chance, but RNG is RNG. Anyway, the rest of the video will show the gameplay so you can learn from my mistakes the best tip I can give you for these lost sectors, sometimes it's better to kill all the little enemies around the champions before you're trying to deal with the champion. So whatever works best for you, go for it. Thanks for watching, see you guys later.
to wash your hands.